what new exciting things are happening in your backyard here in Rochester in cancer research. Uh, lots of progress that has been happening here over the last 10 years or so that have led us to rethink how to approach cancer and thinking about designing therapeutic approaches for the future. What you all need to realize is that one in three of us will come down with cancer and will have to deal with it. And many of you know that in each family we deal with these issues. Uh, treatment of cancer, therefore, is something that is important to all of us. And um, how do you think uh, we, we can deal with it? We have to know cancer, we have to investigate it, we have to learn um, what, what its deep secrets are, uh, what it's all about, uh, to design new avenues to uh, have treatments that are specific to cancer cells and at the same time leave normal cells intact. So that's the holy grail in the business. Cancer is a disease of cells. And um, cancer, as you see, is the result of a fundamentally complex transition in the behavior of cells from normal to cancerous. And, cancer, and cells, many of you may know, uh, are, are very complex entities uh, that you could compare to uh, galaxies, if you wish, in terms of how many billions of stars are in a galaxy, so many billions of molecules are in a cell. And it's the interactions of these molecules that govern the behavior of cells and changes in these relationships between these molecules that govern the transition from a normal cell to a cancer cell. So, you realize this is a difficult problem to study, and yet we can't uh, turn around and run away from it. But there is good reason for optimism. And why is there good reason for optimism? Uh, some decades ago, it became clear that cancer is caused by gene mutations. And that is when I became interested as a young student uh, in studying cancer because that gave me the idea there are some tractable uh, avenues into studying highly complex problems by studying the genes. So, sorry, genetics 101, very quickly, what is a gene? A gene is a piece of DNA that gets transcribed into RNA, then translated into protein, and then does stuff. Uh, what are mutations? Mutations really are spelling errors in the genetic code um, that mostly uh, then get transcribed into RNA, and uh, that may screw up the function of the RNA, so you get no protein and the function is lost. And in rare cases, you get the opposite result, there is a spelling mistake that gets transcribed into RNA and suddenly you get a protein that works better or cannot be switched off. Now, cancer mutations in that sense come in, very, in, in two very simple flavors. One mutation it marks oncogenes. These are usually genes that stimulate cell growth and the mutations will disable the, the capability of this gene, uh, or the capability of the cell to switch this gene off. And there are tumor suppressor genes which do the opposite. These genes inhibit cell growth. And mutations in these genes uh, make non-functional genes, which in the end lead to uh, the inability of the cell to stop something from happening. So in the end, you end up with all lights on green for the cancer cell to be go, 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 and be unable to respond to the environmental cues that rein it in as a social being. Okay, so now we have learned that cancer arises from onc oncogene activations and tumor suppressor inactivations. Very simple thing. So we should now know how to do something against cancer. And so we should think there should be rationales 
that we could use to deconstruct cancer cells because we have some rationale the other way around. How can it arise? Okay, so that has happened over many years and decades. Lots of people, lots of scientists have collected information and found that actually there are many, many cancer genes that are associated with cancer, uh, gain and loss of function. And so one of the breakthroughs in, in the past 10 years was the, the recognition that even if you could stop a certain cancer gene from working, you could, could stop certain cancer cells from growing. And that was a very big thing that now has led uh, to the first drugs in the clinic that are working by that principle. There is only a little bit of a problem with that. So while this is a big breakthrough, this is not enough, and I'll explain why. So cancer arises in different cell types um, in, many, in many different ways from, from different cell origins. Uh, and also cancer will arise not when just one mutation occurs, but each cell that will become a cancer cell will uh, experience several cancer mutations that interact very strongly with each other, with the result that, like us, uh, every cancer is unique. And so that provides then another challenge uh, to generating precision treatments that we all want uh, in the cancer clinic. And so uh, if you then apply what I told you just before, that if you can really stop the function of one cancer gene, it will work, unfortunately, only in a few patients. Or if you take another one, it will also only work in a few patients or again. So these approaches are not really covering uh, the need for, for treatments on a broad scale. So how can we actually conquer that type of a problem? And in that sense, we need a radical change in thinking how we approach this type of problem. And some very cool science and key discoveries have happened in your backyard uh, by several research groups here at the University of Rochester Medical Center and at the Wilmot Cancer Center. So, what we discovered was uh, something, in, in the end, that, that should be obvious, but it was very hard to find in a way uh, like finding a needle in a haystack. And by really studying the relationship between these cancer gene mutations, we were able to find a very simple rule that allowed us to discover the genes uh, that drive these, these very big systems transition between normal and cancer cell. That was the first discovery that was very important. The next important discovery was that these gene networks that we revealed through our experiments were actually regulating uh, common hallmarks of cancer, such as unlimited growth and improved survival skills and altered cell metabolism. Uh, in that sense, then, that argues that uh, there are common targets between lots of diverse cancer cells that one can use to design new interventions. And what came out of this work and what is right now still coming out of this work are individual genes uh, that, that are part of, of gene networks and that give us over the whole cell an architecture and landscapes of new intervention points. So now you can imagine if you have new intervention points that may be relevant to many different kinds of cancers, you can think about interventions that really uh, hold a lot of promise for, preci for, for preci precision cancer interventions um, that are based on, on properties that are shared between a lot of different types of cancer cells. And so, now think about how cancer therapy may look in the future. You may target non-mutated driver genes. You may combine targeting multiple of these non-mutant driver genes, and suddenly you will hit many 
more cancers in many more patients, and that you can do uh, in different ways, covering now a much broader range um, of patients and, and really doing a much better job in providing precision treatments. So, uh, there is really good reason for optimism. We're very excited about this. Um, the research that has gone on to do this is really world class. Uh, we believe that these broadly acting precision cancer treatments will become a reality uh, that has been supported here by uh, local people that, that have uh, provided us support for this. Uh, the environment in the Wilmot Cancer Center is phenomenal for this. The National Cancer Institute has given funds uh, for this work. And um, this is very important, and we want you to know that this is happening here in Rochester and that really important and exciting things are happening here in Rochester. And last not least, what is most important in this are the people who do this, who make it all possible, who create that optimism, and who are brilliant minds, who all came to Rochester and who about 12 years ago weren't here and who have come here to make that all happen. Thank you.